We are on week 18. I'm Kim. I'm Peyton. I'm Anna. And we're going to do this with you. So get out your books. Give it a little shake. Let's start with our memorize me part of it. And we're going to start with our Bible verse, which is, and why do you worry? We're back on worrying again. God really convicts us about worrying. He says we should trust him. So it says, why do you worry about your clothes? So show them your clothes. See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon, who was Solomon? He was a king. He was king of? Russia. <laughs> Israel. Israel. Uh -huh. His father was king. Nebuchadnezzar. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. His father was King David, <laughs> who is the second king of Israel, and the first king of Israel was? Uh, Abraham Lincoln. No. <laughs> okay, you guys are just getting goofy. Saul. So Solomon is the father, or the son of David. Okay, in all of his splendor was dressed like these, was dressed like one of the flowers. If that is how God clothes the grass in the field, which is here today and gone, or thrown into the fire, to, thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Matthew 6, 28. So God is telling us to what? Uh, to trust him. Don't get goofy. Trust him. To trust, trust him. him. To completely and totally trust him. So right here, I want you to draw a picture of, um, oh, it says to press flowers and place, place them here or draw flowers in a field and look at the detail of each flower. That's pretty cool. Have you guys pressed flowers before? Yeah. Have you? It's where you take a flower and you put it between two pieces of Kleenex and then you squish it in a book. And a couple weeks later, you take it out and it's perfectly formed, but it doesn't ever get deteriorated. It's pretty cool. So either that or draw a picture of a flower right here and look at all of the details. So you'll need a flower to copy. Okay, our next book is, Abra our next verse is Abraham Lincoln again. You are not yawning. <laughs> yes, he's yawning. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay, we're back on Abraham Lincoln. And he said, slavery is founded, shh, listen, this is important. Slavery is founded on the selfishness of man's nature. Opposition to it is his love of justice. So let's look at this side. So if you are enslaving other people, you want more than what God is providing. And if you feel like it's wrong to do it, then you are looking, you are trying to get justice. The opposite is justice. So could Abraham Lincoln link to Harriet Tubman and could Harriet Tubman link to Uncle Tom's Cabin and could yes, Uncle Tom's but, Cabin Which was last week, but let's focus, okay? These, which is excellent. And you get a little pinky, pinky link. Do you want a pinky link? Got to have a pinky link. Okay. All right. These principles are an external antagonism. And when brought into collusion so fiercely, collision, so fiercely <laughs> as slavery extension, as slavery extension brings them, shocks and throws and convulsions must ceaselessly follow. Okay. A shock, a throw, and a convulsion. Can you guys give me some shocks and throws and convulsions? So what? <laughs> Okay, so let's think about what Abraham Lincoln was telling us. He was saying that there is such a, um, a tension, such a hardness between slavery. <laughs> Excuse me, may I help you? <laughs> okay, I'm going to explain this, okay? Okay, Abraham Lincoln was saying that there is such a tension between people who know it's wrong to enslave people and people who continue to do it, that until it's settled, until it goes away, there's going to be shocks and throws and convulsions constantly. There's going to be constant irritation, constant hardship until it finally is resolved and people stop enslaving other people. And that's what happens. So let's think of some of the shocks, the throws, and convulsions. How about the Compromise of 1820? The Compromise of 1850. How about um, the Fugitive La Slave Act and the abolitionists? These were all forces working against each other that just caused irritation and tension and 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 um, 
um, people to be upset until finally the Civil War ended it. And so that's what Abraham Lincoln was saying, that it's not... <laughs> That it's not um, it's not going to end until it, it, people are not going to be okay and settled in this until the injustice is taken care of. Okay, so in history we have slavery in the United States, and it says slavery in the United States was an ab um, abomination, and one group of people purchasing another and demanding that they work for no wages, very bad living conditions, and without any freedoms or rights is not justifiable. Many Christians vehemently defended slavery. They were so blinded by their heritage and desire to remain in their lifestyle that they could not see the luc ludicrous nature of their arguments. Okay, so some Christians would say it was okay to enslave people. But that's not true. They were completely blinded. And so we always need to remember that we too can be blinded to things that are completely against God if our culture says that they're okay. And we need to constantly be focused on what God wants. I'm just wondering, um, if they were Christians and everything and they said that slavery, slavery was okay, then that would be lying and so they wouldn't be able to go to heaven because they lied and that would be disobeying one of the Ten Commandments. Well, but we have the covering of Jesus Christ on us, right? So if that were the case, then then no one would go to heaven. But because Jesus died on the cross for us and covered us, and if we believe in God and we accept Jesus' covering, just like the covering of the blood on the doorposts of the Lamb, if we accept that covering, then we can go to heaven. So even though we still lie. So I'm not sure that really correlates, but I see where you're going with it. Okay, so we're going to draw a picture of slave enslaved people in America. And so I'd like for you to draw a picture of that here. Um, and if you want to, one, a better picture might be to draw a picture of a person escaping slavery and going, yes, I'm finally on the other side, something like that. Okay, so then our, um, the theory of evolution, this is science. By natural selection, first formulated in Charles Darwin's book on the origins of species in 1859. It is the theory that organisms change over time as a result of changes in heritable, physical, or behavioral traits. So we're going to learn more about that in science. And microevolution is correct because viruses um, did evolve, but we're going to learn a lot more about macroevolution, which is what Charles Darwin is talking about in science. And finally, the middle of the U.S. is grasslands or prairie. Can you throw that up? <gasps> Grasses, herbs, and shrubs grow in the rich, porous soil. Um, and we are going to talk about the middle of the U.S. a little bit in class. So now we have um, Stuart, who's in Reston. You guys know Stuart? Yeah. yeah. Say hi, Stuart. Hi. Oh, and we have Riley. And Riley used to have blue hair. I wonder what he ate to make his hair turn blue. We'll all have to ask Riley. Blueberries. He ate blueberries. Lots and lots and lots and lots of blueberries did Riley eat. And it says, Jesus speaks quite a bit about worry in Matthew. When we worry, we're not placing our faith in God who will provide for all of our needs. Worry reveals that we think that God may not be sovereign. What does it mean to be sovereign? Um, what does it mean to be sovereign, Anna? It means to um, truly believe in God. It means sovereign means that God is in control of everything at all times and that we can't go out of his path, that, we, that he is in charge of everything. Mm -hmm. So do we believe that God is sovereign? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Pray with your parents and ask that you can learn to frog. What is frog? Mm. It means to fully rely on I'm God. God. Yep. So we need to frog it. All right. So we look forward to seeing you in the timeline in just a second. And you guys are doing a fantastic job on your books. And we'll see you later. Bye. Bye.